Welcome Dragon Slayers, KD here and today we speak about a very special franchise to me and probably to the whole gaming industry this is my review of Final Fantasy XV Before we start with the review of Final Fantasy XV let me give you a short overview of this video I put it in four parts. The first part will be very short. I will shortly explain how the pointing system works. How do I get to my final review? Because I used it already in a review before, I will keep this part really short. Second part will be very important. It's the impression part. There are two subcategories to this part. One part is how did I feel uh, how was my impression of while playing Final Fantasy XV? Second part is with what expectation or with what impression did I come to the game? I think that's a very important part because if you watch gameplay footage, seeing pictures or watching a trailer or watching a review on YouTube or anything like that uh, of a game before playing it you come with a certain expectation into this game and that can change how you feel about the game absolutely with Final Fantasy like I said it's a very special franchise to me so I came with a really big backpack to this game and I just want to, you to know that how I scored this game it has a lot to do with with that backpack so the impression part the second part will be very important then the third part will be the pointing system I will put down Final Fantasy 15 in different categories I will talk about the categories in the first part a little bit more and then I will give points and then finally we come to the final verdict and how did we get to this verdict um, maybe a short summary and we talk about that a little bit so let's start with the explanation of the pointing system I put Final Fantasy 15 in four categories the four categories are narrative game design gameplay and uh, presentation so four point uh, four categories and I have to say to the categories I will I change the categories for every game because not every game has the same categories like a multiplayer game you can't give it the same category to a single player only game or a mixed game or something like that so that's why for every game I will choose a different uh, I will choose different kind of categories but they will always kind of be a little bit the same I mean narrative game design gameplay and presentations are all important things so for every category I will look at things I liked things I disliked and things that are worth mentioned but are kind of neutral so if I find something good I will give it a plus point if I find something bad I will give it a minus point things that are worth mentioned give a zero point and the zero point will not affect the final score at all but I think when it's worth mentioned then I will still put it in into the category so the final score will be or the maximum score will be all plus points plus the minus points together and the score itself will be only the plus points so the final score will be a pro percentage of of the uh, maximum points you could get so if you if I find 10 points and five of them are good and five are bad then it's 50% or when I find 20 points and 15 are good then it's 75% I hope that's clear maybe one little note um, every category can have different kinds 
of points I don't uh, I won't score every category the same points and I think that's in two reasons fair because one reason if I have to do that like every category has, a, has the same amount of points then I start to uh, artificial in many points that I would normally not give for something like that or minus points that I normally wouldn't give so to keep it kind of clean and really the things I liked and disliked um, I think it's fair to give every category a different score also there are games that have a very strong narrative and are maybe weaker in gameplay so it's only fair to give the narrative part more points when they did a really good job there that's the second thing so we are coming to the impression part and let me give you two examples from myself to explain why I think that's very important absolutely here in my review of Final Fantasy 15 the first thing uh, I want to talk about two games I got recently I got both games on discount and after uh, so after they were released for a couple of months and I what so many reviews of both of these games and I already made some kind of opinions uh, impressions expect and had some kind of expectations one game was Titanfall and this game it was priced by so many people and so many said even yeah it, it's a really new angle for a first person shooter and it's really it shines in, uh, in so many ways better than games like Call of Duty and Battlefield so when when I saw it on discount I kind of got it I'm not the biggest fan of first person shooters because I think they're all often a little bit the same I have to say when I play I like the Call of Duty because it's just fast and yeah fast shooting a lot of people that's kind of I like that I don't like if I have to shoot one guy a hundred times until he falls down so I like it when there are many ma enemies and everyone goes down with one or two shots that's kind of what I like but uh, then when I went to Titanfall um, like I was I really was like yeah that, that this will be a really good game and I have to say I was disappointed because it just felt like every other shooter there is so maybe I, I do for one time I review of Titanfall I thought about it there are a couple of things I want to say absolutely about the Titans I think the Titans are really silly because you have this you have the pilot that is really fast and agile and everything and then you go into the Titan and the Titan is very slow and yeah that it's like you come from this great feeling playing so playing fast and everything and then you go to this clumsy titan it's kind of strange idea for me it, ca it didn't feel great to play as a titan it, it feels much better as a pilot and I think if you look at uh, how yeah uh, if you look at military inventions then you see that the technology isn't going to slow and heavy but good armored it's going to fr be fast and agile and that's why I think it's so silly to have these slow titans but that's another way I'm kind of losing my points here this, so I was kind of disappointed so in, but in the end to have to say Titan 4 was a bad game no it wasn't a bad game it was a great game um, it's one of the games I even like the multiplayer because it, yeah because the frustration there was not as big as in as I as in Call of Duty or something like that in the multiplayer there, <coughs> and the campaign was pretty good actually. But I still was disappointed because I, my expectations were much bigger. Then the second game is the Order eighty eighty six. Uh, I got it a lot later after the release, and it was like under ten bucks. 
so that's also why I got it <coughs> and people said yeah it was ba really bad and so on and no one really liked it and when I played it I was like yeah it's not so bad it's a good game for 10 bucks but again if I would get it got it on the release date for 60 bucks it's not a game for 60 bucks so at this point because my expectations were so low I wasn't disappointed, uh, I, I was happy that I got the game for 10 bucks, but I probably would have been disappointed for 60 bucks. So with this a little bit <laughs> longer introduction to the impression, I hope you understand why it's so important and why it can affect the review of a game. So I'm a little bit sorry this part will probably get a little bit longer, but I kind of have to talk about it. Um, my first JRPG ever was Final Fantasy VII. I can still remember it, how I got it. Uh, for always for my birthdays, my aunt will go shopping with me and I could. she gave me like a budget and I could buy things for that for my birthday. That was like my birthday present. And uh, that, that day I went to the games and uh, I saw Final Fantasy 7 and I think I maybe looked at some other games but when I saw the cover art and everything I, I probably already knew I will buy that. I don't know what exactly got me to buy it, maybe because it ha it was a lot thicker and had more CDs than the other games. I don't know, maybe it was only that reason, but I got it and damn I'm happy I got it. Best birthday present ever. <laughs> so. And Final Fantasy VII, it was really my first contact with a JRPG. Uh, it was my first contact with such a complex story with so uh, deep characters and everything. With this deep, uh, complex combat system and everything. That was the first time I really played a game like this. So I can only say it was really magical to play this game. I can only compare it to like a first love something like that is also magical and the feelings there is like you will never get it back like that you will maybe get a li really close to it but it will still be different and that's maybe important because this magic can still be there even if it's different and that's what I had when I got Final Fantasy VIII so I have to say Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 8 I got on the PC. And Final Fantasy 8 it was different than Final Fantasy 7. I was uh, maybe I would have liked more a sequel to Final Fantasy 7. I mean at this point I uh for me franchises were always kind of more sequels than a completely different story. That was also the first time I g got into a franchise that had completely different character stories and things like that even a completely different world but still I like I like the Final Fantasy VIII I played a, a lot of it so at this time uh, it wasn't common to be always online to have an uh, internet connection at home so you got you got your information about new games mostly in from magazines and because I had Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII on PC I got mostly, of course, PC-related gaming magazines. So I kind of missed the re release of Final Fantasy IX that was only on Play uh, PlayStation 1 exclusive. But I heard a little bit, uh, maybe, I don't know what the life cycle was there, but a couple of years later I heard about Final Fantasy X. When I heard about it and that it would be a uh, PlayStation 2 exclusive, I knew I had to get the uh, PlayStation 2, the console. And again, I think it was a great decision because I really love JRPGs and if you love JRPGs then there is no a way around the PlayStation 2. It was the best console for this kind of games. And while waiting for Final Fantasy X, I got Final Fantasy IX because, yeah, at this time there was something like, how do you say it, you know, you could play PlayStation 1 games and PlayStation 2, so I got Final Fantasy 9. 
I have to s say really Final Fantasy IX. It's not like I dis disliked it, I liked it really much. I think uh, uh, like Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, it all has this kind of magic I talked about. So, but still Final Fantasy IX, it was kind of, you know, play. I played it for, for because I had to wait for, uh, for the release for Final Fantasy X. And god damn it was a hype for Final Fantasy X. And I don't think I was disappointed. I remember the first day I went with a fr uh, drinking with a friend the day before and I had a really bad morning, let's say, because I drank too much then. So I went to the shop uh, with a hangover and got the game and I maybe could play it for 20 minutes or something like that and then I <coughs> I felt so bad that I had to stop playing it, but st um, it's kind of like this: this little story, these little memories that really are the magic for me for the, uh, with this franchise. I don't think there is another franchise I really have the this kind of connections. What I also really like that Final Fantasy X is, if you look at Final Fantasy 7, 8 and 9, Final Fantasy 10, it really tried in so many directions to improve from the older games in the combat system. Of course in the graphics, the graphics were miles away from the ones you see, you saw at 9, 8 and 7. It was so fantastic and even the story had some awkward moments but I really liked it. I liked the characters and I fucking love the music. I think everyone that likes Final Fantasy X when he hears the intro music um, your hair will sh just stand up. Then came Final Fantasy XI. Um, I'm not too much into MMOs absolutely because I don't like it to after I paid for a game pay more for a game for so I can play it so <coughs> I got Final Fantasy XI, but I didn't play it too much. Like I said, I'm not too much into MMOs. Um, so I kind of looked forward for Final Fantasy XII, and I have to say it's the first Final Fantasy I was really disappointed in it. I thought it was boring. The story didn't say... Uh, wasn't so impressive like the last ones. I fa thought uh, most of the characters were very bland. I didn't like the combat system because all the combat systems before in the Final Fantasies before they were for every character unique and now we had this combat system that was that was kind of like every character could get the same abilities and could equip the same weapons and so on that was kind of yeah for me really st uh it didn't feel like a Final Fantasy. I have to say, I played it a couple of years after I played it the first time. I played it only one time through, to be honest. Not like the other Final Fantasy I played several times through, but Final Fantasy XII only once. And then, a second time I liked it a little bit more because I thought uh, monster hunting was very interesting and things like that. So, but more than the main main story I was more interested in the side quests I thought they were more interesting than anything else I didn't got the S Zodiac thing yet the uh, remake because I think it's way too expensive maybe if it's cheaper I will get it you heard they did some kind of difference with the bat uh, with the progression system yeah I will see I will for sure po play it once more Final Fantasy 12 but at this I have to say at this point I was disappointed then Final Fantasy 13 came out and <coughs> yeah I, I mean it was like terrible in every point um, but everyone thought like yeah like it was like that and it don't have so much problems with Final Fantasy 13 I think the uh, Square Enix, they tried something different with the franchise and they missed the market totally and Yeah, I can live with that. Not every game in Final Fantasy 13 a in the Final Fantasy franchise has to be 
Excellent, there can't be one game that's bad. Um, I went over it pretty fast, let's say it like this. And then Final Fantasy XV came out and I have to say I have more trouble with this game than with Final Fantasy XIV. It's a better game than Final Fantasy XV, but my problem with Final Fantasy XV is it teases me with this old magic, the old Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII, VIII, IX, X, 5 and 6 too, all of these games had this magic, this special Final Fantasy vibe, or I don't know how you want to call it, and Final Fantasy XV had this in certain points, but it was always just a tease. And in so in the major part of the game, it had didn't have this magic. It was pretty bland, to be honest. And yeah, let's let's come to the impression of the, of Final Fantasy XV. I think the fa uh, the game has two major parts. The first part is open world, doing side quests, and yeah, and there are these story missions, I will come to the story missions. And this part, I kind of have the feeling that Square Enix was like, yeah, in Final Fantasy XIII they complained about there's not enough exploration, not enough side quests and things like that, so they kind of smashed this open world in it and then let it be. And this is also kind. I also had kind of the feeling it's like this open world style. It's so Western. They look so much at Western games, and they saw ah oh, open world. That's a selling point, and so let's do that. Let's let's just throw in a, an open world. And I will come to that a little bit later. Why I have so troubles with this? I think open world is something of the most overrated things you can have in a game today and I will come to that later. So the second part um, was a very I think from it was from chapter 8 to chapter 15 it was a very narrative driven part you, you went totally away from this open world so in the open world you had really a lot of side quests and so on and la and the story missions I think the story missions were pretty bad the just how they were built up and so on and in the second part of the game in this narrative driven part the story just got suddenly interesting let's say it like this it got interesting and that was so much better than this open world uh, part it was really the characters got suddenly the, there was a plot before um, there was kind of plot but you had to put the pieces together through the story missions and now you were really in the plot you were with the characters and things like that and I really liked the second part and there but there are two problems I have with the second part and the first one is like at this point, the pace was so fast and everything with the story and all that I kind of wished here they would give me more side quests and things like that. It's just sometimes a little bit to something to do on the side and then go back to the story, something like that. And that's my problem I have with the whole game. It's like in the first part in the open world, the story is just kind of side note and in the second part the side questing the exploration is is not even there let's say it like this and this kind of pacing problem is really troublesome in th in this game i don't understand what i really have the feeling like that uh, they wanted to do this narrative thing this very concentrating on the story and they just threw the open world in it just for the sake of it because people complained about exploration and things like that in Final Fantasy XIII and my trouble is because uh, with that are two things uh, one thing is like they know how to build a world I mean the old Final Fantasy absolutely Final Fantasy 7 I come to that 
it's just one of the best examples for how you should build a world and I will come to that later. Second thing is like at the end of the game the magic was there finally it felt like a Final Fantasy and then it was finished and you can and they tell you yeah you can now choose chapters so where are you going back here yeah, at the, that point where you missed the side quests and everything so you go back to the open world and the open world like I said it doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy it more feels like a western open world game to me and there are way too many of them um, for me to really enjoy that anymore I also have really trouble with the combat system here but that's maybe because I really love turn-based games and I not friend yet with the with this kind type of uh, combat system but I don't think the combat system ruined it, uh, destroyed the Final Fantasy 15 I really think it's the these two things I already talked about the absolutely the pacing in these two parts for me I don't really understand why didn't they go for the narrative one and then put side quests and more world more level design in there and grew the game from there instead of throwing us at the beginning in an open world and then have this narrative part at the end. I, f I find it so strange to be honest. But let's talk about that in the next part a little bit more. Okay let's come to the pointing system. I already talked about my impression of Final Fantasy 15 and you see it's not that good. So how did it end up in, in points? So we come first to the narrative and like I said narrative it comes to that what I already talked about these two parts the open world and the story uh, the narrative part from chap chapter 8 to the end I would say for the whole thing I give one plus point because I really liked it at the end the story got really this Final Fantasy magic um, the things you expect from a Final Fantasy game and I just really liked the whole really at the ending it it, it was really fantastic so for this whole part <coughs> I give one point and for uh, for the whole story I give one point and for the ending that means not the ending for chapter 8 to 15 I give another point in the category narrative because really I enjoyed playing the last parts I give a third point for characters I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of the four main characters but they are really the side characters are uh, I enjoyed that kind of more the bad guy was re was an interesting character sometimes a little bit confusing but like I said at the end he we really started to understand him I loved Luna I had a little bit of problem with Luna um, that okay here I will talk about spoilers just to be clear my problem with Luna was that we didn't see much of her in the first parts in 1 to 7 and then we, when we fought Levi Leviathan then for, um, in this there is a cutscene where she, where she dies and at this point I was kind of like yeah I don't not really know that character so why should I feel anything like for her or any why should I feel anything in this situation right now they made her build up really bad and then suddenly we we get this story elements with her and Noctis and why didn't they give us that before so we so this so that this scene has a lot more importance that was the on, uh, only thing with the character build up I didn't really like um, but I will give another point for characters 
because there were some really interesting Final Fantasy-like characters in there. I give a mi minus points for the story missions in the open world because first thing was the missions were not fun to do. The second part was that the story itself was just torn in pieces at this point and I really, I, I, I don't like story missions because story missions means that the story itself is uh, anomaly in the game. The player itself has to go out of its way to play a story mission and that can't be. It has to be that you're always in the story and you have to go out of the story to do some side quests, finding some secrets or something like that. And that's one big problem I have with the story mission because it re pushes you out of the story every time and it's absolutely in a game like Final Fantasy it you need a flow in the story so you can really follow it and I didn't have that from in the first missions at all it was it was anyway strange I mean your home country were um, got invaded and you would go here on your on your road trip with your friends and have fun that that was kind of feeling I had and it was really strange strange for me so I will give a minus points for the story missions and I also have to say story mission is exactly a thing why I don't like this open world uh, game design because story missions it means it every time after you did the story missions you get ripped out of the story itself and the pacing is just not good but when you look at the pa package of a game the story should always be in the package and not outside of the package and in an open world it's always in the outside of the, of the package in an open world side quests and other things are in the package but the story is outside of the package and it so should be the story should be in the package and side quests and things like that should be outside of the package so if you want to do side quests if you want to explore you go out of your way to do that it shouldn't be you go out of your way to do a story mission that's just really bad game design for me and with that we come to the second point game design so just a real recap here I gave three plus points in the narrative and one minus point game design or here more level design and like I said they went for the open world and I'm not a big fan of open worlds and let's let's just compare it with Final Fantasy 7 I think Final Fantasy 7 you can say it is an open world I say it's not an open world I say it's an, an expanding world and an expanding world is always better than an open world why is that I will explain it to you because there is a progression in it there's a progression in it <coughs> there's level design in it and the game is uh, the game the the world itself is part of the game and you don't have that in an open world now you say of course it's part of the game no it isn't it's just a placeholder where you put your characters in it where you do your side quests in most of the open world it, it could be an empty space and you it wouldn't change the game this uh, the gameplay at all on the other hand in an expanding world you need the world the world is part of the game let me give you some examples so you understand in Final Fantasy 7 there is always like I said this progression there are always you get a little bit of the world then you progress in the story or you do something so you can go further then you get a little bit more of the world get a little more things to explore, a little more secrets to find and things like that but the game gives you another hurdle, another barrier and you can't go further except you 
progress again like as example one of the best example in Final Fantasy 7 is the market place in uh, in the slums where you have to go into the villa of this Don Cornelio guy and but you can only go in there uh, only female persons uh, only girls can go in there because he only likes girls of course so you have this whole section uh, this whole puzzle section where you have to find clothing for clothes female clothing uh, and things like that and you could do really the binary stuff the things they tell you to do and you go in there and then you're fine you can go in there or you can find all the secrets and so on and you will give a little bit of different scenes so as example you you're standing before Don, Don Cornelio as Claude uh, dressed as a girl Tifa and Eris and if you didn't find all the secrets in this part uh, Don, Don Cornelio will choose Tifa or Ares at this point but if you do all the secrets and find everything then he will choose Claude and you can really get to a funny scene you can even choose to almost kiss him and things like that so that's really fu funny and engaging and for the players and then you get to the next part you get more dungeons where you have to battle but then you get, as example, to the Shinra H HQ and again, to process, in, there are different floors and the higher floors, you, for every of these floors you need a special key card. So you have to find the key cards there to progress in the game and again, there are a lot of secrets to find there, you, you just can go directly finding the key cards doing this puzzle so you can do more finding more secrets and things like that and again that's engaging and the player wants to know what happens next what comes next so we, we finish the Shinra part and we come into the open world or at least outside of Midgar in the open world and then you th think oh now we now the game just started we are now in this open area and we can go anywhere we, we want to go no we can't there is again the game gives you a barrier there is a swamp with a uh, with a big snake in it and if you played it normally with nor uh, normally you won't have the in the uh, enough high level to defeat the snake so what you have to do is go to the chocobo ranch um, get yourself a chocobo and so you can avoid the snake with a chocobo and in this part you learn ab about a very important mechanic in the game so because there is a level design because they don't offer you the whole map from the beginning because there is a progression in it they can do things like that and give you a very uh, very important information or an introduction to a very interesting but also complex mechanic about the whole game, the whole chocobo breeding thing and we come to that later, I mean the whole chocobo breeding, you can totally ignore it if you want to, but if you want to find all secrets you have to do these things that, and here the game gives you a short introduction to it so you get past the swamp, you have to go to Chuon but again there is an open area, there is a new place uh, for what's the name you know the fort where you have to battle things again this is side this is side questing and things like that you don't have to do that but when when you're already there you can take a look and things like that there is the first time at this place where you can find Yuffie uh, a secondary character if you can say it or an optional character let's say it like this that's f um, you can do that and things like that there's enough exploration enough secrets you can do even if the game doesn't give you at this point all the map but you you want to know what happens next so you go to Chuon you have to infiltrate the boat you go on the boat to the next continent and again 
the game gives you a little bit more of the map you have to progress again you, you have to go to gold saucer um, you get thrown into a prison and the only way out of it is with the chocobo races again chocobo races is an optional thing but again if you want to find all secrets it's a very important mechanics and the game in introduces you to these mechanics at this point and these little introductions they are very important so you finish gold source you get a buggy you can go over rivers and go on with the whole game and then at one point you get high wind and you have the whole map for you you can fly everywhere but you can't land everywhere there's still secrets there are still places where you can go with high wind and for that you need the golden chocobo and for that this whole mechanics this whole build up with the mechanics and so on are coming into place like again you can go through the game without doing that but the interesting thing is like you, you have these op optional things and there is a build up to it there is a progression in it and that's why an expanding world is so much more appealing than an open world where you just get thrown into into this map there is no introductions to mechanics there they are just quest points and as soon as you anyway have quest points and no, no secrets nothing to explore why do you have an open world it's like this why i i just don't understand it because it's so important for these developers to make the biggest the most beautiful open world but in the end bigger just means more emptiness and then they fill it with some boring side quests repetitive side quests and things like that it's not even as close as engaging as the things we have in th in the example i gave gave you final fantasy 7 so i kind of hope you see what what's my problem is with this open worlds this modern open worlds and why i much more like an, an expanding world so that's why how i call it i call it an expanding world because at first you get only a little bit of the world and as you progress you get more in the world and that's much more motivating for me much more engaging for the player to have the, always this progression and i don't think you have that progression in an open world you can of course you can explore it and sometimes you find maybe a monster so but this monster will be f much too strong for at this point and the whole thing seems kind of useless and also in a in a world in an expanding world you always know that the areas you can go in this point they always be for the level you are uh, you you are right now and that's level design that's a good game design to have that <coughs> and open world is just in level design so extremely lazy that you don't you exactly don't have these things it's just about being big and beautiful for me an open world is like a french shower i don't know if you know what a french shower is a french shower is if you when you smell you just cover it with a lot of perfume and it's kind of like even if you smell good it doesn't mean that you're not dirty and for me it's kind of like with the open world even if it looks beautiful it doesn't mean that it's it's interesting so that was a very long i could rant about this a lot more and it's not only final fantasy 15 i mean it's like every Ubisoft games since Assassin's Creed it's even The Witcher 3 has it and many other games have this really <laughs> just throw you in this op open world and they tell you to you can explore there but it's not nothing to explore in the end you follow the quest, uh, the quest marks you follow other marks on the map you don't go look for secrets or sh anything like that because in one point it's also overwhelming 
like I said, in a world that is expanding, that gives you only a part, then the area you are, it's not too big. You can take your time and explore these smaller areas. It makes much more sense than exploring a whole big map where you can run around for hours and you won't find anything special except you follow the quest mark. Okay, I have to stop here. I give a minus point for game design because of this open world and because of the thing I said before. Because I think the pacing in the open world and the pacing in the narrative parts are both off and they just didn't understand how to engage the, p um, the player. With all the things that Final Fantasy has to offer, it's not like Final Fantasy has nothing to offer, it's not like the open world has nothing to offer, you, that there is nothing there. But it's, ki it's totally the pl uh, pacing and that they first they give you almost nothing uh, narrative-wise and then they just um, give you a tsunami of story and nothing else to do. That's why game design, it just, instead of ju um, putting in any pieces, I give it just one minus point. So we come to the gameplay and uh, now we talk about the combat system. I already told you I don't really like it. There are many reasons for it. I think th um, it's just if you look at the old Final Fantasy, fan, uh, Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10, 5 and 6, all of them they the turn-based combat system has just so much more depth in it and the combat system of Final Fantasy XV it f feels shallow and not only that I think it's often it's not really optimized very well often the camera is blocked by some foliage and then you have to kinda turn around the camera while fighting on the same time and it's the ba fighting is just confusing you don't really know what happens then you get the uh, evading system and it tells you to press a button um, I think often it's broken it doesn't work even if you press the button um, often it doesn't really work if, if it works the parry system is even worse than the evading system because the time you have to pr uh, to make a counter attack after blocking the uh, attack it's so short it's often so short that it's it's almost impossible to hit the button so fast also often I have enemies that kind of hit me two times instead of just one time with one if one attack and then again it doesn't work maybe you block the first attack but then the second one hits you before you can hit the parry button I mean in the end it's just a button smashing button smashing you press circle a lot and yeah it's just nothing to it it's really nothing to it the only thing you have is that with triangle to teleport from to your enemies or to a safe place where you can recover your magic but I think they could have done a lot more with that absolutely when you look at the boss fights often the the boss fights are so there they could show you I always had the feeling in the boss fights now they can show me different that the combat system has so, some depth behind it that there is some meaning behind it but then they ju they just make these boring boss fights I, I thought like when you fight the titan you just button smash his hand why not doing something like sh a boss fight like Shadow of the Colossus where you have to climb the titan uh, Titan with your triangle thing and it, it could uh, in the end it's just like 10 minutes slashing his hand until he's down it was so it was really just bad and then even worse is Leviathan 
I mean first you you use triangle you hit him one or two times then you go away with triangle and then you go in again sometimes Levi Leviathan he hits you and you take some damage but his attacks are so f spread out that you don't have to worry about your HP or that you can die there so you do just the same th thing over and over again and because he has such a stupid big amount of uh, hit points it takes forever then there is the um, a sequence between and then you get you would kind of like this super noctis you can suddenly fly and shoot weapons out of nowhere and the only thing you have to do there so first I thought like oh now the game will get interesting that was just the preparation for this part of the of the fight but the only thing you have to do is with R1 lock on to Leviathan and then just button smash the circle button so you do damage. Um, sometimes Leviathan hits you but he, he, he does even less damage so you don't have to worry even worry about that. About getting hit too much or anything like that. You don't have to worry about that. And he still has this stupid big amount of HP so it takes just forever to do the sa same shit over and over again. And Man, I mean, the fight looked visually nice, but that was all. And then there is the friendly AI. Not the enemy AI, I mean, there are monsters that just charge you and do their things. Nothing deep there, but the friend AI. Oh man, it's so terrible. You get down as Noctis and you wait and wait and wait until you, someone recovers you. You can sit, stand next to two or three of your guys and they will concentrate on the enemies and let you die. So the only thing you have uh, you have to keep in mind is to always have high elixir with you so you can heal yourself. And I don't really know if they really do anything in the battle. I mean the only thing I feel like they do some damages when you give you give them a command with this body function with L L1 is it I think then you say hey you do that and you do that otherwise they won't do anything they will, won't be any help or anything so the combat system has a lot of flaws I won't give for every of this flow a point like I said before I don't think I don't like the combat system, but I don't. But Final Fantasy XV could still have been a good game, even with that combat system. But I give for all these flaws the combat system has one minus points. And when I look forward to to the remake of Final Fantasy VII, I'm really worried because if they can't even do a very sim simple combat system like we see here in Final Fantasy 15 right then how do they want to do the much more complex uh, combat system of Final Fantasy 7 with all the material and things like that how how I don't see how how it can work maybe they surprise me but at this point I have no expectations for that and I just don't see why they don't go back to the turn based because they are the master of turn based combat systems every combat from Final Fantasy 5 to Final Fantasy 10 was so exceptional everything was so original was kind of different than the other ones and in form of combat in and in form of progression and now they just bring one game after another and they're trying things and everything feels shallow and bad because they try more to do something in this button smashing real time bullshit like we see in Final Fantasy 15. That's another, <laughs> I have just have to say a big disappointment for me. I have to say, okay, of course there are people that like this, mo this type of combat more than turn-based and I'm I like more the turn-based one than this so I give for the 
combat system minus one points because I think for what they try to do there are way too many flaws and they could have done much better absolutely in the boss fights they could have done much better there so we come to something that is related to the combat system and that's the progression system the progression system is maybe in an RPG even more important than the combat system because it ca keeps the player engaged in it, in grinding and things like that. If there is interesting progression. And yeah, they went and I don't. <sighs> they went for the latest thing they could do a skill tree. I'm absolutely no fan of skill trees because, I, like I said, it's something of the latest things you can do. It's so unoriginal, it's and boring and bland and you kind of give to yeah you give the player like he first has to s research all the options you can to h how to progress and then to find the best thing at this point to progress but in the end it doesn't really matter but but it's kind of like I don't even want to do that I don't want to look to, through five or six skill trees and see for which uh, for which ability I, I use my points I'm just not the the skill tree is so bland and boring I can't get in engaged in that I mean again uh, I can give you just so much better examples the other problem with the skill tree is that there is only one progression way to progress and that's by leveling up so leveling up means you do you in no normally in RPGs if you level up you get points for all your attributes for your HP your MP if you have MP and things like that so that's one kind of progression and then with a skill tree you just have the same thing you get with the level up you get ability points and you can use the ability points in the skill tree so you have only this one part of progression there's nothing more and if you go look at other progression systems Final Fantasy 7 yeah I take this example again you have the material system and why is the material system system different than the skill tree uh, I tell you because there is another way to progress to improve your skills and that is by finding by finding better and stronger but or very unique materials in the world we are exploring the world we are doing side quests and that already gives you some interesting side quests you don't even have to think much about uh, about what do I give the player as a reward for this side quest you can do uh, an unique material and make a really interesting side quest out of that and again that's much more engaging than having just this one th just the grinding part just leveling up so you get AP so you can improve your skill tree and that's why I think skill tree for me is it's just la uh, kind of lazy, kind of boring. It's just copying a system that's already done so many times. It's nothing unique like the material system in Final Fantasy VII. It's not nothing as unique as the Guardian Force system in Final Fantasy VIII. In Final Fantasy IX, we had we, by, by finding different kinds of armor or weapons you could equip to your uh, to your character um, you could learn new ab abilities with the uh, with the equipment again we have some maybe not so unique maybe you see that in other RPGs too but again you have two types of progression systems um, you have the one the grinding part the leveling up and the other one is finding items so you can get better ab abilities via these items 
and also the items give you better states like different states or if it's a weapon maybe better attack states and now you can say yeah but Final Fantasy X they have a skill tree there but it's a skill tree with a twist in it because it's not only enough to level up for you to proceed in the skill tree there are um, you have to find these flares and to unlock this, uh, the ab abilities so again there are very unique very rare spheres you need to get to the interesting to the really strong abilities and again this fair that you, you don't just get get them you have to find them in side quests by exploring different thing uh, the world and things like that so again you have these two types of progression system that's just way more engaging way more interesting than just the grinding the grinding part alone so nothing against grinding uh, or something like that but if you have different kinds kind of ways um, you can progress in the game and getting stronger getting better abilities and things like that it's just much more engaging much more interesting and the game has just immediately more to offer than with a skill tree so if I give the skill tree a plus point or a minus point again I dislike skill trees I think I explained that again very long so again maybe some people like the skill tree more because it gives the pl player immediately some options so what I have to look at here is not do I like it or not I will look at it like while you progress in the game while you progress in the skill tree do you feel does the gameplay change do you feel stronger after that do um, does the whole ga uh, fight battle system improve and things like that does it progress and in form of Final Fantasy 15 I just have to say no it doesn't the only thing that I realized that kinda changed was um, that there were more this b body combos or something or how you wanna call that if you attack the blind side that you can do a body combo but that's just uh, animation you can't even do something there I didn't feel like the ge it uh, in any way by getting more abilities in the skill tree that's anything in any way changed with the gameplay or anything so there's absolutely no progression there's no feeling of improvement or anything like that it's like why even bother with the skill tree of course you have to bother because indirectly of course you get stronger but you don't really feel it and that's why I give the skill tree a minus point and it, it gets even worse from this point on um, again I have to go back to the story missions I know I put the story missions already in narrative part and gave it there a minus points but like I said th there it's b because I disliked how they ripped the story into pieces because I want to be engaged the whole time into the story except if I choose to do a side quest that's why I gave a ma minus point to the story missions there now I would have the same problem in games like The Witcher 3, but because in Witcher 3 the, uh, the story missions are much more interesting, uh, much more engaging uh, and things like that. I wouldn't give a minus points there for, for the gameplay, but in Final Fantasy 15 I just have to do it because it's so bad. I really dislike to do the story missions for a long time until I went to episode 8 or chapter 8 <coughs> just because there are two types of story missions the one type is uh, walking to a way too long dungeon in it to uh, fighting the similar 
fighting similar monsters over and over again in a way too narrow area and you couldn't even save between the whole missions so you had to do finish the whole mission or die and start over again so I just I don't think that that was really fun to do and just for a piece of a story for kind of progressing in the story a little bit uh, the other part was like uh, infiltrating infiltrating uh, enemy base and yeah I'm sorry in a Final Fantasy game there's no need for stupid stealth in an RPG you don't need stealth RPGs about fighting about getting engaged with the monsters about grinding about leveling up and to have to, to do the sneaking parts and you you anyway know at the end you have to fight someone um, but to forcing to do your stuff um, it was just boring so story missions again gets another minus points for gameplay it's a minus point for the narrative part and it get, gets a minus point for the uh, for the gameplay let's come to a little bit better things the side quests I have to say I enjoyed doing the side quests even if it was sometimes repetitive I think they ch still had um, a lot of variety in it there were a lot of different things you could do um, again I enjoyed that they broke the monster hunting thing back from Final Fantasy XII I said it's one of the the more interesting parts of Final Fantasy XII and uh, I was interested in, in uh, I found them interesting then you could do get to a point shoot the photo or finding objects finding persons and things like that I think it had enough variety and I will give for the side quests be probably because I'm just known to worse things I will give it a plus point <coughs> and because I already bitched about uh, about a lot of things in the game I think I can give the side quests a plus point I will also will give a plus points to the different skills our four characters have um, I'm not big fan of the fishing part because I think the fishing part uh, um, was done a lot in a lot of games and it just gets old kinda please find something else but still I mean it's a good mechanic it's interesting it has progression it has more progression in it than the rest of the game probably um, then of course the photo one and the survival one was more passive but then again there was the food one that was kind of um, engaging I thought it was interesting to find different material to find different rest, uh, kind of food you could make and things like that so that's another plus point <coughs> and that's for the gameplay we have two plus points and sadly three minus points so we come already to the last point that's the presentation so I kind of say um, I'm not too interested in graphics I have to say I don't think a game is good or bad because of the graphics so for me if a triple A game comes, if a big publisher comes with a game like this, like Final Fantasy 7, eh, it's like Final Fantasy 15, I just expect uh, great graphics. <coughs> and I don't, I don't think um, it's worth to be kind of put the presentation in a game like this into pieces and give it different points for different things because it's not like Persona 5 where they do a lot more with, uh, with a lot less it's nothing special like this it's just like I said I expect that from a AAA game that the graphic looks good and I'm not going to look how much fibers are are in the 
are animated in the hair or things like that. Also, I think that there are some very stunning moments in the game. Um, there are also some parts that aren't that well made, I think. When I fought Leviathan, he sometimes just floated through uh, buildings and things like that. I also think like if you compare the main characters or story characters, even not playable characters with the side characters, with the NPCs, then you see a lot of difference. You just see which characters got more love than the others. And yeah, it's kind of like this little things you see, but like I said, um, graphics is not so important for me, so I won't say too much about the nef negative things and I think in most parts it looks good. It looks also like a Final Fantasy, I think. And f that's why I give you uh, another plus points. And with that we already have our points and we come to the final verdict. <laughs> so let's come to the final verdict. And I don't know if you probably didn't count with me, so I found 11 points and How much was the score? So I only found five plus points. That's a score of 45% was below average and uh, Trust me. I'm surprised as you are maybe Maybe some of you are not as surprised or think it's too high. I don't know But I personally thought it would be higher. It would be around 60% a little bit above average because personally I don't think Final Fantasy 15 is a bad game, I just think it's a bad Final Fantasy game and I think that's the reason why it got lower points than maybe I thought it would get because in I mean I put like almost over 60 hours maybe almost 70 hours into this game and that alone says that like I ch enjoyed it for the most part I don't agree with uh, with everything but I, I got engaged into the game and everything like that so I for sure enjoyed it but let's look at why it got such a low point um, Again, if you look at the uh, minus points, there is the combat system that got minus points. Um, again, I don't think that's the reason why it, it's not uh, such a good game. I think even with the combat system with all its flaws, it could have been a really good game. It could even have been a really good Final Fantasy game, but it just wasn't. And the problem, I think it's they call it uh, Final Fantasy for fans and for first timers and I think that's not true. It's a Final Fantasy for Western mainstream gamers that kind of expect so, um, some things of open worlds and they just delivered exactly that and not, nothing more and that's the problem. A Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy always gives you more than just a mainstream thing. And I absolutely think it's not a Final Fantasy for fans. Like I said, it has this magic, these points where the magic from the old ones com comes up. But again, it's just teasing you, it's not really there. And as soon as you really feel like, now I'm in a Final Fantasy game, it just ends. <clears throat> and I really think that's that's the problem. The Square Enix is so afraid of not bringing us, uh, not getting the numbers at the first days of release. So they pleased the uh, Western co uh, consumers more than their core consumers and that's just thinking wrong uh, 
I mean, they're so fixated on maybe the sales on the first month, they have to be good. And if they're not good enough, um, if it's 7 million instead of 8 million or something like that, it's already bad. But you have to look at that another way. You have to please the core gamers, please the one that the people that love the franchise because there is the money and there is also the money in the future, in the future of the franchise. I mean, I a mainstream gamer, he will probably buy Final Fantasy 15. He may enjoy it, he may not enjoy it, that doesn't matter. He probably won't buy the DLC packs or anything. I mean, a year after they still release, they uh, may release DLCs, but the mainstream gamer, he already went to another game. He already plays another game. Probably Assassin's Creed Origins or something like that. I don't know. Um, so they, they went on and if even if they, it's the first time they played the Final Fantasy, I don't think that any mainstream gamer will be so pleased into the, in the game that they will buy the remakes, go go back in time and play uh, play buy and play the older Final Fantasies. That that's not a mainstream game. The mainstream games they they buy their Call of Duty, they buy their Assass Assassin's Creed, and maybe one or two other games in in the year, and and then they just play one time through and then they keep going to the next game but on the other hand the fans the core players they will buy the DLCs they will buy the remakes I mean I have five, probably five or six different uh, versions on different platforms of Final Fantasy 7 and maybe I will even in the future even buy more Final Fantasy 7. I, I mean, I for sure will buy the re remake and so on. I probably will buy um, the Final Fantasy 7, uh, Final Fantasy 9 remaster version. For now, it's a little bit too expensive for me. I think it's around 20 bucks. I don't think that a remaster should be more than 10 bucks. So I wait until it's discount. But I will buy it. I will buy the Final Fantasy 12 uh, remaster. Again, it's at the moment too expensive. I think it's al almost 40 bucks, but it's way, way, way too expensive. I got the Final Fantasy X and uh, Final Fantasy X 2 remaster. And like I said, I got the Final Fantasy VII remaster. I don't know if they make a Final Fantasy VIII remaster, but if they make one, then I will buy it. I'm not too much into merchandise, but there are people, fan, and th these are only the core player, uh, the core fans of the franchise they will buy merchandise they will buy figurines uh, I don't know they will buy uh, one to one sized clothes sword or something like that they will buy the necklace of Final Fantasy 8 that uh, Squall is wearing and they will I don't know they will buy a chocobo stuffed animal they, they will buy things like that and and there is so much more money there I think and if you please the core players they will come back to the franchise you don't you don't know if the mainstream gamers will ever come back to the franchise And that's the problem what I have with, fi with really Final Fantasy 15 because it's really the potential was definitely d there, and you feel the magic over and over again from the old games, but it never gives it gives this magic magic to you. It only teases you with that, and th that's so disappointing. Let's say it like this. It's it's just disappointing. So I think this video got enough long. I probably could talk for days about Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy 15. But that's my review of Final Fantasy 15. I hope you found it entertaining even if you don't agree with me. 
if you don't agree with me please leave a comment um, s tell me what you think maybe you know a point here and there I could g give uh, a plus or a minus point more somewhere maybe if there's some interesting aspects you you can you can give me then I may make a different a video a different score with the with the with you guys in mind I mean there are other points like in presentation I kind of wanted to give but then I put it all together I even forgot to t say it like the sound like in almost every Final Fantasy the sound is again excellent but maybe that's again something that you expect from a Final Fantasy that's why it's hard to just give it a, a, a point yeah things like that so yeah please leave a comment please tell me if you liked it a uh, review like this it's maybe a little bit different than your normal reviews but I really kind of enjoy this video so some feedback would be nice and I mean I like I said I talked a lot so if you made it until the end you have to press the like button otherwise you will wouldn't be here, you will, will be already in the comment section and tell me what an idiot, idiot I am so but let's end it here let's not make this video even longer uh, thank you for watching and I hope I see you in another video